Yeah, I mean, two great uh, presentations uh, before me. And yeah, you know, really quite a lot of overlap um, between uh, my talk as, as well, um, which is really great to see, very interesting to see. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about Champion and open source in, in higher education. Uh, champion is championing is quite a strange word, but I'll, I'll come back to that in a, in a second. So yeah, I'm Bruce Darby. Um, I work for information services at the University of Edinburgh. Um, I've worked at the university for 15 years. Uh, the first eight years I worked for uh, the Student Disability Service doing IT support for disabled students. Um, so working with a lot of assistive technology, um, screen readers, but also voice recognition software before voice recognition became <laughs> really big. So that's quite interesting. And then I moved to being a, a project manager and working on our content management system that runs a, a, a really huge part of the of the university website. Um, so, yeah, we created a new content management system or we migrated all the content over uh, from the old system and I realized really that I was less of a project manager and really more of a product owner so that's kind of like in agile methodology or scrum um, where you are like gathering requirements liaising with stakeholders um, writing short documentation what we call user stories and then sort of um, uh, prioritizing them um, uh, so that they're in a format that can then be developed and, and, and form a, a product. So our content management system is based on the open source content management system, uh, Drupal. And yeah, I wanna talk a little bit about Drupal today, but not about it, the tech side and not about the content management side in, in particular. Um, so yeah, looking at open source communities a bit in general and how the University of Edinburgh supports these, especially around uh, non-technical support. Um, and then how we started to look at widening the focus um, away from just sort of focusing on, on, on Drupal and, and the Drupal community, but also closing some gaps, the gaps between students and professional services, so what, what we call non-academic staff at the university, um, but also uh, between uh, students and, and, and the open source uh, community and the open source uh, world uh, at large, trying to close some of those gaps. And just a little bit about the open source uh, organization, Open UK, and how we've been involved with that. Yeah, and a little bit about the future, just uh, about where we where we want to go um, and, and where we want to use Open UK. So the Drupal community is really quite an incredible community, and you know, going to a Drupal conference is is, is like you know attending. It, it has the sort of atmosphere of a village. Um, you know, it, it's like it's the opposite of that sort of uh, what people see as, as being the sort of geek mentality. You know, it's it's really friendly, it's open. Um, you know, it's, there, there are sort of really good codes of conduct. Um, there's a lot of talk about diversity and and inclusion. Um, yeah, and, and it, you know, it has a, a long um, running history. Um, it sort of has the the, the benevolent, benevolent dictator uh, that some uh, open source uh, communities have. Um, it has a, a commercial side to it, uh, which is called Acquia. Um, but it has this most incredible, uh, really big uh, open source community uh, all around the world. So yeah, our content management system is based on this. And, and we really tried to support tried to start to support this by having what we used to call code sprints and, and became contribution days. Um, sponsoring events, uh, giving some venue space for free to Drupal events and volunteering time uh, to support those events. And that includes uh, members of our team helping um, create and, and, and run uh, a Drupal conference in, in Europe. Uh, so it's a quite big uh, event. So the contribution days, um, 
yeah, uh, it became important um, for Drupal to recognize the contribution from non-technical people. Um, and in a lot of open source communities, there, there tended to be um, a tradition of, of really giving sort of kudos to, to technical people, to coders. Um, and they really wanted to start to celebrate the contribution by non-technical uh, people. Um, however, it is important to find ways to write code and to contribute code. So that is really like the core part of, of the whole of, of open source. And we as a university have found that quite difficult to do um, for, for, for a variety of different reasons. Um, yeah, so this is one of our code sprints, uh, or, or really what we call contribution days now, to, to really move away from the, ter to the term code. Um, so it's just a group of people coming together from all over the university, um, technical people from all over the university to join us uh, in a day of, of looking at um, the Drupal issue queue, uh, where it's just kind of like, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of, of, of uh, work tasks to be done and starting to pick these up. And, uh, you know, three, four years ago, this was actually very unusual for people around the university to all come together in this way. We're all very, very siloed. And there was very little overlap between central services and, and the academic uh, world. We did realize that we were becoming really too focused on, on, on Drupal, and we wanted to widen this, this out. Um, so, yeah, we employed a student um, that we called our open source champion, hence the word champion in my, in my title, um, really to try and get a bit of connection uh, with students and try to sort of get some connection with, with academics. There is very little communication, uh, cooperation, uh, knowledge sharing between uh, the professional services, uh, the, the non-academic world, the, the people that are running the central services, people that are running things like servers and, and, and email and, you know, all, all the sort of office type uh, products and the, and the academic world and what the academics are doing and, and how they are, are being involved in the research that they're doing. Um, so we employed this student and, and yeah, they uh, started to put together an event um, we're lucky with that we have a, a, a Wicca, a Wikimedian, um, someone who, who is championing Wikipedia. I would put an event where the morning was teaching both students and staff uh, how to create uh, and edit uh, Wikipedia pages. So basically the, the university has um, a goal to try and uh, to balance uh, Wikipedia and get um, more women in, in who are uh, have contributed to science. Um, a lot of the time, their contribution goes completely undocumented, uh, and we've been addressing that. So, I mean, basically, it's teaching people how to create uh, pages for Wikipedia, and and it, it is incredible to see how people go um, and, and get so involved in this about about creating these Wiki, Wikipedia pages. Um, then in the afternoon, we had a series of, of speakers talking about open source um, and, and, and various different aspects about that, really just trying to build these bridges between our central services and, and academics. Um, and this student started to attend open source events uh, around the university. Um, and one of these was by uh, from Open UK. And... Um, it's an organization that uh, is promoting um, all aspects of, of open source uh, in the UK. And it was actually an award um, event to give out these uh, awards for, for people that had, uh, had submitted uh, entries into this competition. And there really was no representation um, from Edinburgh University, and, and people just thought that this student was the sort of representative for, for Open UK, uh, for, for, for um, the University of Edinburgh. Um, so he, you know, people were quite amazed, really, that we had this event going on, and it was very low key uh, within the university. Um, so you know, he seemed to hit it off really well with the Open UK people. 
he was invited down to to London, um, and they ticked off this kind of uh, award, this year's uh, award, awards um, down in London. And we got Amanda Brock, um, who is the chief executive of Open UK, to come up and speak at our event, and it, and it, and it created this really nice connection uh, between the university and, and, and Open UK. I uh, won't go too into too much uh, about the awards, but there there is a, a YouTube channel, you can, and you can look a, a bit more uh, about that. So it was just a, a few weeks ago. It was all online, um, and they did some really exciting stuff. Like they sent out a box of, of kind of snacks and goodies, and you know all kind of swag type stuff from from Red Hat and, and Google and stuff like this, which was which was absolutely great and made it a really nice atmosphere on the day. Um, yeah, we, we're also heavily involved with the Open UK Universities Committee um, and things were just starting to sort of get a bit of traction and kick off before the whole pandemic uh, locked us down, um, which was a bit of a pity. Um, and again, we're just trying to create um, a committee of, of academics and representatives from universities um, around the UK to look at being able to share uh, educational resources and be able to share knowledge um, about how to teach and, and explain to students really the kind of full spectrum about what open source actually is. So yeah, I mean, this is kind of like the crux part of my presentation now. We wanted to, to create an event for UK university academics. Um, we got some good connections with Red Hat and, and they run this really incredible course called POSSE, um, which stands for Professors Open Source Software Experience. And, and professors is, is the sort of American term for, for academic. We're not talking about senior academics here. It's kind of aimed at all academics. Yeah, so it's a really incredible course. And, and, and we were hoping to, to uh, run this over the summer this year. Obviously, that, that couldn't happen. Um, we don't necessarily want to, to, to run it online. It, I mean, maybe we'll have to do that. But if there's an opportunity to run this next year where we would get all these UK academics uh, together in one location, uh, and, and run this course over two or three days. That would be absolutely fantastic to get everyone in the room together. I mean, this posse course uh, about open source in, in education is really looking at what students know about open source. And, you know, the research that they have done, they find that students, um, they've gone beyond uh, just thinking that um, open source is, is, is free and, and they do understand quite a lot about the benefits uh, of open source and understand some aspects of, of, of contribution, but they very, they know very little about, about what it really means. They know very little about the licensing aspects of open source. Um, and they really, really don't understand how FOSS culture can lead to employment and they don't understand the portability of those open source skills. Um, and so this is this is a great opportunity for students to be able to create something, uh, to work with open source, to to, to write code, to contribute, um, and to get something like really concrete on their on their CV. So some students are are, are pretty amazing. They've done some amazing stuff, and um, you know they've lived they've lived all over the world, um, before you know before they're sort of eighteen, nineteen. And they're going off and doing internships. They're very, very proactive, but not everyone is like that. And for some people, they really have, you know, the only thing they've got on their CV is working in the sandwich shop or, or behind the bar. And obviously nothing wrong with that at all. They've got nothing concrete. They, they're they talking, you know, if you say to them, where do you want to work? Uh, you know, where would, be, where would be the the sort of top place you would love to work? They, they talk about things like Google and Amazon and, and these sort of companies. Uh, and, and, and they've really got nothing to, to offer in terms of what, what they can put on their CV. Um, so yeah, this is a, this is a great way of getting students to, 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 to learn about open source and, and, and uh, how that can lead to employment. Um, so there really is not much overlap between higher education, open source, and, and, and the actual kind of real world industry. Um, so even though open source is very big, 
in industry doesn't feature highly on a uh, higher education curriculum. Um, but the thing is that people in industry think that students understand all this perfectly. So don't make any allowances. They're, they're not very compassionate um, to students. They think they, they, they think that students understand all of this um, and, and are kind of taught this. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, they don't really give people the benefit of the doubt that, that, that this might be their first kind of like foray into, into the coding world. So this course, um, this posse course, um, which we are trying to, to, to look uh, with Open UK to see if we, if we could launch this uh, next year, it really is looking at how we prepare academics to teach open source. Um, it's about teaching uh, that participation to students. Um, so, you know, it is totally understandable why the curriculum doesn't tend to sort of heavily, while well, they might be using open source technologies, they might not really talk uh, about the sort of wider spectrum of, of, of open source and, and what it actually means. Um, because like, it's gonna take a long time for uh, curriculums to, to change. And, you know, sometimes with, uh, with real life uh, software development, things move at a, a much faster pace. It's kind of difficult to marry the two up uh, together. And for a lot of academics, they, they have other things that they need to do, and they might not be a huge part of the open source uh, community themselves. And, it, it, you know, for students to be involved, it can be a very, very steep learning curve. And uh, yeah, we wanted to see you know, a situation where academics could share the sort of projects that students could work on um, rather than sort of having to sort of go off and, and do that research themselves and really sort of teach students about how this can lead to employment and, and building uh, portfolios, but more importantly, about how to learn to code in the real world. So while students might have the odd group project, a lot of the time, they've not really worked on software where you're working with a whole range of people, a whole range of experience, where there could be quite strict coding standards, a certain etiquette with a particular community. Um, and really about learning how to pick up someone else's code and, 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 and add to that um, with documentation, with comments, uh, and being able to, to be in a position where they hand the code on to someone else. You know, they're in a project where kind of, you know, they, they, they write the first lines of code together and that's it and that's it finished and, and, and that's the end of the project. And they don't really learn the skills of, of how to work uh, in, a, in, in a, a real software project. So as I said, we, we have really wanted to uh, widen the support of open source at the university. And, and there is quite a lot going, uh, really, that's going on. Um, although there's nothing really sort of coordinating uh, everything at the moment. So we do have this really good uh, open educational resources. Um, there's a couple of senior managers that are really pushing this. And this is like really across the spectrum of, of uh, educational resources. Could be a set of diagrams. It could be images. It, you know, it could be workbooks, a whole range of things that could be picked up from uh, school age right through to further education to, to higher education. So it's a, a whole set of very comprehensive uh, resources. As I said already, we have our, our Wikimedia in, in residence and um, that has really changed a lot of people's attitude about how they can get involved with open source projects and they don't need to be from a, a coding and, and, or a technical uh, background. And yeah, the, the Jupyter Notebooks is like a computational uh, notebook idea. So we do have some sort of harder core tech stuff going on um, as well. So yeah, I don't know if uh, you have any any questions um, at all about that, especially about the kind of posse idea or about the professor's open source software. Would you provide a little bit more detail? I may not have gotten that part in, in fully. Yeah, about the, the posse course, yeah. Um, I mean, it is run by Red Hat and they have run this at various different locations uh, around the world. I mean, it kind of 
you know, the sort of cost you're looking at is, is, is something in the region of kind of 50,000 uh, US dollars. Um, but there is, you know, there's a lot of sponsorship. It's something that uh, Red Hat really, really want to support. It's, it's exactly the sort of thing that Google uh, really want to support. Um, and they have done these courses um, in various locations around the world. And I think the last one uh, was in South America, uh, possibly. And it's a, a course where um, academics would, would sign up for it and maybe spend an hour a week for a couple of months just doing some preliminary work, uh, looking at open source and, and really kind of exploring the wider aspects of, of open source. Um, and then they would come together and um, they would be taught by these people, really experienced people from, from Red Hat, um, uh, about all aspects of, of open source and, and really explaining to academics what they need to get across to students uh, and, and, and how they can help students get involved with open source. And, and just really kind of spelling out the important aspects of, of what that means um, to, to, to people's uh, employability. Um, I mean, and you know, and, and it's about being able to contribute. And I think people worry sometimes that, you know, people will be really judgmental of their of their code or, or what they've achieved. And it's the exact opposite. You know, it really is like people get uh, a lot of respect from from being involved um, in these kind of concrete projects, and people understand that they that the skills that they've that they've learned. Awesome, great. So, are there any further um, questions from the from the audience? So, I had had a question when when you talked about you know the the university um, yeah. itself and its kind of its attitude toward um, open source, right? So, um, how did you manage to overcome these challenges and kind of promote open source better? I mean, I think it was that um, slowly um, some some senior managers really started to see how a number of different aspects were all coming together. Um, the open educa educational resources, which was really seen as a sort of community project more than open source, a sort of like licensing uh, project. Um, about supporting community and, and, and really starting to uh, make an effort to promote the university as something that would work, that would support local communities, but also look at having an impact, um, you know, in, in the wider world. Um, you know, people started to see um, the work that was done on Wikipedia and how they would the impact it had on people who went away saying, you know, I've just written something and created this page for Wikipedia, and then you see it go live. And um, one of the senior managers in particular said, you know, we shouldn't just be contributing to open source, we should be celebrating it. And then I realized, oh, you know, we've got this kind of sea change now where people really started to understand the benefits of it across this very wide spectrum. Um, you know, and, and it going sort of way beyond, um, you know, saying is it going to save us money to to, to really recognising the the wide spectrum of, of benefits that open source uh, can bring to something like the university. Sounds great. I think you know it would be actually great for for someone like the OS sort of specialist group that if we had a package, you know, where all those benefits with you know use cases are linked. You know, and we can hand it to someone that then talks to the, like you said, the senior manager or something, those people and, and push down the potential to influence them in a positive side, right? By sharing the truth. Um, I think that might actually help what you think. Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. Um, and I think as well, you, you definitely should um, have a look at Open UK and, and, and look at opportunities uh, to link up with them. I mean, it'd be great at some point for maybe for me maybe to get back in touch when we kind of relaunch the the university's committee and just 
see if there's any connections um, that you can help us with because we we have struggled to promote it um, around the UK in, in terms of getting any traction uh, with with some academics at some universities. So just to, Bruce, BCS Open Source Specialist Group is a partner of Open UK. I'm actually a former treasurer of Open UK. So okay. uh, <laughs> uh, our, our monthly newsletter <laughs> includes updates on Open UK. Brilliant. Perfect. 